this bass, uh, the big influence for the basses is if you look at this, I had really considered at the time that uh, the reason I have this piece out here, remember we had done story time. So I was thinking about a white bass that would go around these with this. Uh, and this is the European uh, porcelain influence that you saw in my cases earlier. So I was going to put decorative edges on this like I did story time. So here you see, uh, here's the frame base that I was proposing for the castle instead of the wood. And take a look at that. So um, the big thing was, in my mind, you know, that people could take this out of this base and jigsaw puzzle it into this larger base. And uh, that was one of these four o'clock in the morning things. You wake up and you go, how am I going to do this? And you finally, after months of working on it, come up with a solution. You know, now you look and say, well, of course, that's the way it should be. But man, on this side of it, now, I haven't had this file out for seven years. You, you finish the piece and you pack it away. And it was interesting today because I was getting ready to uh, do this. Uh, we looked at wood companies and the kinds of configurations. And uh, I had uh, Paul Larson worked on this uh, base for me, turned it on a lathe and cut it out. And of course these are resin, they're cast resin. But we had a look at uh, what was a traditional style uh, facing on the curves that would go on this base. And I'm really glad that we selected a wood friendly feeling. And uh, so that was that. Uh, another big thing was uh, things like um, the castle fences. You know, we went down to a company down in uh, Los Angeles and had all these brass rails stamped out. I got a whole box of brass rails uh, in there and then the gate that came down in order to get this detail. Now, what you're looking at here, you know, in this castle, uh, you wouldn't think about it unless, unless I said it. Is, let me go and I forgot to get this off the cabinet, but just hold on for one second. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I have around my studio. Uh, I forgot about this. But this castle... Um, has 147 parts. This is one part. And uh, this treetop is one part. And then there's uh, pewter uh, trunks on here. Uh, that's another part. So there's 147 specific parts. I had to count them out, lay them out uh, to put this thing together. Uh, you wouldn't think about it. It took five of us to do this castle. It took us one year to do it. And this castle, and I am not exaggerating, uh, this cost, uh, we spent $125,000 on this castle to get this castle to look like this. And the reason was is because we had to solve the entire base at the time. Everything that you're looking at in the base today was driven by this castle. So you talk about scary. Take a look at the sidewalk in this. I decided this would be the color of the sidewalk before that whole sidewalk thing. I was had to make those decisions at that time. I had to make the decision on the height uh, from here to here where we could have the train because we needed to have the train run all at the same level even though we didn't even have a train at the time. Because if I had uh, miscalculated this at the time then the train would have to go uphill and that would have really been a struggle uh, for the collectors to deal with a train that had to go up and down hills. This is something you wouldn't even think about. Um, here's, uh, here's just, uh, we took photos of the castle. This, of course, is before we put it in the base, and we had engage people in here, people taking pictures so we get a sense of scale. But take a look at this. Uh, here it is uh, in the early landscape stages. Uh, that we did. And uh, of course when Disney talked to me about this they didn't want landscape. And uh, uh, after I started to go down to the the park I went, oh these gardens and everything are so beautiful. And I would go over and talk to the head horticulturalist about these plants and the types of trees that they were. So here you see this evolution of the base. Uh, we had to decide the color of the water that would go through all this. And uh, you talk about attention to detail. 
on how to compress all this down uh, to its smallest parts. So someday I think we'll publish this evolution of these photographs, you know, on the site. Ray can take a look at these, you know, after the videotaping and select some of the evolution of these. Here's something that I'm especially proud of and care about. Oh yeah, this was nighttime lighting, is what this was. You know, here we had to try and capture the spirit of this castle at night. And then, you know, here we had, now that we had opened up the hallways, we were looking at the little tiny murals that were down the hallways. And, you know, could we get those in there? So no one had ever done this before. So, and this was going to set the tone whether this was going to be a successful project or not. Oh, yeah, here's the grid for the uh, gates that come down over the drawbridge gates. And uh, you can see all the precise and exact sizes that we had to do. And then we had these made in brass. And then uh, we focus on the plant life and all the colors. And where do you see this? This is, you know, I would go down to the park and uh, write down uh, the colors of the bushes, take notes on them, and bring them back to you. And so, look at this. This is, this is just colors for the castle. Now, I sat here and hand-painted this studio myself, and you can see Eva's handwriting. And what Eva would do is uh, help me match colors, so I would show her the color. Uh, that's the castle accent. That's a wash over the castle. This is the stone highlight. Look at this, 0.2 grams, 4.5 grams of white castle stone. Here's the color of the roofs. All of these are in very specific mixes. And uh, what we do, here's the pink. Look at that. Look how many colors in that castle. 